Hello! Hi! Hey! Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl, fourth and initiated. This is a non-edited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. And it's been a while, almost been a month. Uh, been uh, taking it easy. You know, the first round of playoffs were unbelievable. But uh, my interest starts to wane in the second round of the playoffs into the third round. So when you don't have a horse in the race, it's kind of tough to, you know, keep watching hockey for, for months on end after the season has ended for your club. But nevertheless, you know, hoping Boston um, gets to hoist the cup. I know a lot of you cheering for those underdog teams, but uh, would like to see Boston uh, win it again. Uh, moving on from that, uh, let's talk about the Tucson Roadrunners. If you've been watching this channel for a couple years, a few years, three years, um, I usually need to defer to some Tucson Roadrunners talk to, you know, get some comedic relief out of the hopelessness of the Arizona Coyotes. But fortunately for this season, I didn't have to because the Coyotes, you know, strung me along with hope until the 80th game of this season so there was only two games where there was no hope at all for them to make the playoffs so good for the coyotes to keep me interested and entertained enough where i didn't have to you know pay attention to tucson but we probably should pay attention to, to the tucson roadrunners because they took a step back this season whereas the coyotes took a step forward this season um and in a large part due to injuries much like the arizona coyotes so when the Coyotes get injured, um, that affects the Tucson Roadrunners as well. And they fin they came close. They finished one point out of the playoffs. Um, pretty sure Colorado kicked them out of the playoffs, much like their counterparts, the Arizona Coyotes, lost to the Colorado Avalanche. So that's a funny you know storyline there. But uh, it wasn't all doom and gloom for this season. You know, Tucson missing by one point. They had a lot of players, you know, really have a coming coming out party uh, this season. No Dylan Strom, no Brendan Perlini, no Lawson Kraus to, to you know, um, get on the stat sheet and carry the team. No, it, it was pretty much a team by committee led by Lane Pedersen with a D, not a letter T. It's, it's Pedersen, not Peterson. Uh, 47 points in 67 games, good for him, 23 goals. Followed closely by Michael Bunting, which uh, Arizona Coyotes fans know pretty well. He got called up in about January. Pretty sure he scored against Boston, actually, his first NHL goal, so that's funny. But uh, Bunting, expect to see him make a push for the Coyotes roster this upcoming season. Robbie Russo, love that name. Um, rookie defenseman on Tucson picking up 39 points a lot of assists six goals and 33 assists 39 points in 67 games and Nick Merkley who started the injury carousel for this organization who got injured right around training camp actually he got injured after Dvorak who uh, got injured before training camp so Nick Merkley was one of the first, you know, players in training camp and then got injured for like half the season. He only played 45 games, so he missed about 22 games, I would say, but he picked up 34 points in those 45 games. So, you know, nearing a point per game, you know, pretty close, about 10 points off a point per game um, pace, but uh, Nick Merkley is one of our uh, highly skilled prospects forwards in the pipeline, so expect him to compete with Bunting to you know, make a push on the Coyotes roster, much like Connor Garland did mid-season uh, for the Arizona Coyotes, but uh, what happened? They, the Tucson Roadrunners started off strong, they went 6-2 and two in October, had a middling November where they went 5-5, five and five. But then February and March, I guess those injuries kind of caught up to them. Um, like I said, Bunting got called up in January, so that probably led into February. But yeah, Connor Garland got called up. He never went back to Tucson after his call up at the end of December. And Kyle Capo Bianco got called up in January and February and then got immediately injured the first game he got called up. And uh, he missed the rest of the season with a knee injury. 
And uh, Mario Kempe was up with the Coyotes a whole season. So, you know, the Roadrunners didn't have Kempe there. So they went 2-8 and eight in February and then started March on a four-game losing streak and dug themselves a hole that they could barely get out of. They managed to climb back to only miss by one point, but uh, couldn't make it happen. Um, injuries, for the most part, was a reason. And also goal scoring, which is crazy because the Coyotes also have trouble goal scoring. So the Coyotes are not going to get goal scoring help from the Tucson Roadrunners, so they gotta look elsewhere. They gotta hope that Schmaltz comes back and scores some big goals at big times, or look to free agency. You know, there's a lot of players available. I'll make a video of that um, later on in the summer. But at the trade deadline, uh, Chaka made no moves for the Coyotes, but managed to make a move for the Roadrunners, um, acquiring Michael Chapu or Chaput. Uh, in exchange for Jordan Wheel, that was due to Christian Dvorak coming back from injury, and uh, Shaika had to make room, so he let go Wheel for Shapu, who put up 16 points in 16 games for the Roadrunners. So good on him. Uh, he contributed uh, right away, and uh, we'll see what happens with him. I don't think he'll make the Cowboys roster if they can keep him on the Roadrunners. That's great, but uh, maybe he walks. I didn't look at his contract evaluation to determine where he's going to be next season. Chaka also made a move in the mid middle of the season to require um, I think it was Peterson and Fiore from the Nashville farm team in exchange for Fashing and Laurent Dauphin. Uh, Laurent Dauphin gets you know traded from and to the Coyotes so many times it's kind of hard to remember if he's on the roster or, or in the organization or not. So the fans no longer in the organization. They brought back Peterson, not to be confused with Pedersen. So they have a Pedersen and a Peterson on the same team, which is confusing. Um, but um, they sparked, they needed uh, bodies on this team because the guys were taking up all the bodies. So Chaka made a move to acquire some offensive talented guys. And they did pretty well. They pretty much uh, formed the second and third line for the Roadrunners. But it didn't make much of a splash I think Chaika was hoping for. And then in the playoff race to end the season, um, Chaika decided to throw Garland down to help them out. And he did pretty good. He scored uh, four points in those last two games Connor Garland did. But uh, too little, too late. Roadrunners missed the playoffs. But it's not just goal scoring and injuries that I have to blame. Um, It's the goaltending. Just going to go straight into it. Um, the goaltending did not show up. Now you might say, well, it's the American Hockey League. You know, they have bad defense. You know, you can't really blame Aiden Hill and Hunter Miska. But um, they were six in the league in goals against. So their defense was pretty good at keeping pucks out of their net. But these goalie stats are just pretty brutal. Aiden Hill with a .906 save percentage, just hovering around 900. Um, Not good at all. And Hunter Miska is below .900 save percentage, so not great. Hill went 16 and 19, wins, losses, and Miska went 10 and 12. So neither of them um, having a a winning record, holding a winning record for the season. Um, Not impressed by the goaltending. Aiden Hill came up to the Coyotes when Ronta went down with an injury and had a five-game winning streak. And then kind of got shelled the next couple games. And once um, Chaka made the trade, made the acquirement of Calvin Pickard, who played like three games for the Coyotes, they sent Hill down um, to lead the Roadrunners to a playoff spot and to make a push for the Calder Cup. But uh, just he couldn't make it happen, which I'm I'm disappointed in that. Uh, I think Hill's been in the system for a really long time, and um, he needs to start start showing that he's capable of carrying a team and winning games for a team on his own and giving that stability on the back end and uh, supporting his team. I mean, if his team is top 10, top 6 in the league for goals against, I mean, you got to you got to win some games there. Um so disappointed on that front. Uh when Hill got called up, he went 7 wins and 5 losses with a .901 save percentage. So once again, hovering around the 900 mark, not good numbers at all. 
So, uh, you know, Chaika's got things to think about. I don't... Th- he should not make a move, obviously, but what I'm trying to say here is that Hill's got, like, one more season where he makes a statement for the Tucson Roadrunners because Kemper's contract is up at the end of this season coming up, and uh, Chaika's banking on Hill, filling in that gap. So uh, Hill's got to have a big summer for a big man um, and get back to it. Um, not too much... Bad news for the goaltending front because they got some good prospects in the Ontario Hockey League. Ivan Prosvitov um, carried the Saginaw Spirit to the third round of the playoffs. He was boasting a .93 save percentage, with which is that's great numbers for a goalie. But uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it to the finals because he got suspended for batting the puck into the crowd, which is a five-game suspension in the Ontario Hockey League, which is, uh, that's hilarious to me. He literally just, like, baseballed the puck into the crowd and got suspended. And then their team had a 3-1 series lead and lost in seven games, I think, to the Oshawa Generals, I think. So that's funny. And their other uh, goalie prospect is Tendek, who plays in the Western Hockey League, who plays for the Vancouver Giants, who's in the finals right now. And he's sporting a .921 save percentage, so good numbers from 10 deck. So we got some young goalies, um, younger than Hill and Miska. So those goalies look promising. Um, just down, I'm not feeling Hill and Miska. They got to step it up, both of them, um, next season for the Roadrunners. And hopefully there's no injuries for Auntie Ranta and Darcy Kemper on the Coyotes, so we don't have to see them in the NHL next season. They could get one more season and really round out their game one more time and see where we stand next summer. But uh, just, you know, throw some concern that the defense of the Tucson Roadrunners, pretty good. Goaltending, not as much. And goal scoring, not as much. So things to look at. A couple players should be coming, making the jump to the Roadrunners forwards-wise next season. Nate Schnarr, I think, will uh, start in Tucson next season. And um, the World Juniors Canadian gold medal scorer, Tyler Steenbergen, should have a good sophomore season. I want to see him be the next Connor Garland and make that jump to the NHL. So we'll see how his next season goes. But uh, overall, you know, a step back for Tucson. But um, the injuries had a trickle effect to the organization. And I expect them to make the playoffs next year and make a strong push. And, um, yeah, that's it. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll be making more videos weekly from now on. So stay tuned. And uh, thank you for your support.